Namaskar. Uh, today uh, we are going to continue with the second part of our ancient education and the knowledge about ancient education. Uh, this is an uncut lecture series of me. Uh, my name is Dr. Kostav Sen Gupta. I'm an academician. And in this series, you will also see that the lectures are not edited. So there will be a lot of startling from my side. You will also see a lot of repetition, might. Mm, you will see me not speaking in a TED-like fashion. Uh, I speak out of my heart and mind, and I try to share my understanding and my wisdom and my little knowledge what I have gathered with you all in this channel. So today we are going to talk about a uh, way of teaching or learning and that a uh, way of teaching or learning which was very popular in uh, ancient Indian education system especially when it came to the religious education about Vedas and all the other four types of uh, religious learnings under uh, Hindu religion and uh, this particular type of a learning was uh, uh, accepted by all six schools of Hindu uh, 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 religious system and this particular learning system is known as Shruti. Uh, Shruti is, you must be knowing about Shruti, you must be telling me, oh I know Shruti, it is about listening. No, Shruti is not about just listening, Shruti is remembering what you listen and also it is about not memorizing but synthesizing. There's a difference between memorizing and synthesizing. For example, I teach uh, students, I teach students for more than 20 years. And believe me today, the education has gone more into documentation and rather than learning. So the learning has become a secondary part of, uh, you know, uh, sitting in a class. But documenting that particular lecture or documenting that knowledge what the teacher is giving has become more important. And not only that, in our exam system, we are more focusing on how good is that student memorizing of what he or she documented. So it is about memorizing, it is about documenting, it is not about learning. And that's a, that's a difference of ancient education system and the modern education system what we have today. Just let me tell you, when I teach, uh, uh, my many of my students, now this Gen Z, are uh, the one who, who takes a snap of what I am writing on the board, you know, or just voice records of what I am telling, or just asks me to send the slider, the slide deck to them. You know, very interestingly, it is entirely about how good you are documenting. That means you are how good you are gathering that knowledge. And believe me, believe me, I have seen many of them or most of them have not even gone back to see the slide deck again or to see those notes what they have taken before the exams or juries or evaluation. So what's happening in day-to-day -day classes across India, we teach them, we give them information, information and they collect this information and it ends there. So if you ask a child what the child learned in his second standard, third standard, fourth standard, fifth standard, ninth standard, it is very difficult for the child to you know, recall that because he was busy collecting it and he was busy memorizing it for the time being because we have a limited memory. We are not elephants that we have a huge brain, you know, our brain is limited. So our brain methodically erases information which has been gathered earlier unless it is an information which is uh, actually uh, life saving for our species. We normally don't preserve that information so we are used to it throwing it off. So this learning system what happens today is majorly into writing it down, documenting it and then to think that you may require this knowledge at certain time and at that time you need that document to read it again. You know, and that is why this documentation is important in today's situation. Uh, but Shruti was different. Shruti was different because Shruti is basically about hearing, about listening, about memorizing, obviously memorizing, and also about synthesizing it through practices. For example, if I give you a theoretical knowledge of swimming, 
you cannot swim you know you can you, you know which hand to put on after which hand but unless you are synthesizing that particular swimming by swimming it is very difficult for anyone to learn swimming through a theoretical knowledge right and that's exactly happening today we are pouring down theoretical information till 10th standard and then in 11th and 12th it goes beyond the level of a you know, capacity of a brain and then we start trying to you know uh, put them uh, in practice which never happens tell me frankly tell me uh, we learned so much till 10th standard right we learned about uh, trigonometry we learned about alphabet I, i'm talking about math um, about uh, algebra we talk, we learned about logarithm how many of you truthfully have used them in your life or someone told you how to use them in your life have your teachers ever explained that particular formula of pythagoras's theorem anyway before pythagoras in india also we had the similar theorem or the same theorem and we utilized it uh, we'll come back to it in another video but where to utilize it have anybody told you that a pythagoras theorem is being used in our daily life uh, because we have just you know accumulated that knowledge we learned because we had to crack an exam and once that exam is over once the geometry classes are over and we once we prove the pythagoras theorem in the paper which is i don't know why we need to prove that pythagoras theorem because unless we utilize it how i am going to prove it anyway uh, and then after that proving we just conveniently erased it from our mind right nobody told you that the pythagoras theorem is actually a formula which you are using every day for example that's that that particular screen if i tell it's 13 inch screen 15 inch screen 12 inch screen that's actually going through a pythagoras theorem right nobody tells you that and that's the problem in our education system so earlier days in indian education system we had a beautiful method of learning called shruti a learning and teaching obviously it's called shruti and interestingly shruti was also attached with another concept called smriti smriti is about the things we remember smriti is remembering shruti is listening hearing synthesizing so if you take shruti and smriti together and that becomes a very strong learning system you know rather than writing it down papers after papers and those bunch of papers after a certain time we just pour everything on that paper and we think we are done with it right and that's all right so writing and you know uh, memorizing is not as powerful as shruti and smriti right uh interestingly multiple historical periods is being done and then they have proven that shruti is very important at certain time and in multiple ways it is you know uh, 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 used in our life for example if you have a smriti of swimming then you will not forget how to swim if you don't have a smriti of swimming it is easy to forget swimming right normally they say that if you learn cycling if you learn swimming and some of these activities you will not forget but if you don't have any smriti it is easy to forget these things uh shruti is a method where there is no document and it is being a method practiced for thousands of years and interestingly those domains where it is it is very important the domain evolves and individuals you know uh, add on to that knowledge bank for ages and ages shruti is a very strong tool where we add information we add our own wisdom when we are telling someone else about that particular information through shruti for example if i want to describe a snake and and i say the snake is supposed to be long it is softer in body construction it has no legs and hands you know and that is from my interesting feature but if somebody ever being you know uh, confronted with a snake they will have a different experience about a snake and they will add on to it when they explain snake to someone else and interestingly it can only come through shruti because it also la is laced with our personal experience so shruti is something which is not only telling and listening it's also something where we are adding information from our side through our personal experiences so for years and years when it evolves 
that particular subject becomes more molded it's not about a stationary subject where it's fixed like we talk about a formula and it's fixed but it evolves especially when it is philosophical especially when it is skill oriented especially when it is about learning a wisdom shruti is a very good tool so today i think it is very important to bring in shruti in our classroom education where a teacher should encourage a student to add on to his or her personal experience when they are talking about certain things and trying to evaluate certain things rather than reading it from a book and then trying to memorize that information as such and that's the power of ancient education namaskar my name is kostav sen gupta look at my other videos in the channel get back to me if you would like to have any clarification